Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are going to be making our way to the Revenger's Shack. But before we do, like always, let's talk about what I did off screen. And really all I did was farm up a bunch of runes to get five levels into faith. So 300,000 runes should be enough to get your uh, faith up five times. Also, I put on the heal spell and the electrify armament spell. And we're going to use our dragon communion seal to be able to cast those. All right, let's go over to the grace and level up. We're going to put five levels into faith, which will bump us up to 20 in faith. We're only going we're only going to go five more levels into faith and then that's it. No more into faith, no more into arcane. We should be good and we can focus on dexterity, strength, endurance and vigor. Let's go ahead and hop on Torrent and then start putting some markers down. Our first marker is going to be right here. Second marker is going to be right about here. Our third marker is going to be down over here. Fourth marker is going to be right about here. And the fifth marker is going to be right here. Get rid of this marker real fast. We'll pick ourselves up a somber smithing stone four. Good stuff. We'll be able to upgrade our weapon here in just a bit. And then we're going to head southwest towards the fourth marker for a minute. And then we're going to veer off to the west, to northwest. Just run right by all these wolves. Not necessary to fight them. Unless you absolutely want to. We're going to fall down the cliff. And then over here, be really careful. There's some new enemies. They're like these hand enemies. They can be pretty dangerous. The small ones aren't really that dangerous. They can hurt. The big ones are what are dangerous. And there is a big one over here. You can kind of see it. You see its fingers and fingernails in the ground there. It's kind of hiding under the ground. If you walk over that, it's going to grab you and you're going to have a bad time. Now, all of these enemies are weak to fire. So if you have any uh, fire pots or anything like that, you can use them to... Uh, help you out in killing these enemies. I'm not going to bother with them. We're going to grab the Intelligent Knot Crystal Tier. This will boost your intelligence whenever you put it into the Wondrous Flask of Physic. Not really important to us as we're going for a quality build. We're just going to follow this around to the third marker. Be careful for the land octopus over there. Unless you want to kill it, like always, go ahead. Feel free. I'm not going to bother trying to kill every single creature in this game. It would take way too much time. Let's grab this grace. And then we're going to pull out our bow. Go ahead and two-hand your bow. 
we're going to run up this pathway to this tower. Now there's a seal on this tower. We're going to have to solve a puzzle. This is going to be killing the turtles again. So off to the south. Be careful, by the way. As soon as you touch that, these zombie guys are going to spawn. Try not to get hugged by them. First turtle's right there. Just follow the cliff. And then if you look up in the tree here, you can see the second turtle. And then we can just continue following around for the third turtle, which is right here. And then as soon as you kill all the turtles, those zombies, or what I like to call them, dude bros, because they always hold up like their one arm, like they're going to give you one of those side hugs, um, will disappear. Now we can climb the ladder, and for anybody that may be a caster or a mage or anything like that, we're going to get a memory stone. So you'll have an extra slot for spells. Good stuff. Now we can come out of the tower, we can hop on Torrent, and we're going to head west-northwest for the moment, and then we're going to head straight north. I'm actually going to veer off just a bit here to head this way. There's two land octopuses over there, and I just, I don't enjoy fighting those enemies. There's a couple enemies in this game that just are not pleasant to fight at all and that is one of them they're not the hardest but they're just not the funnest to fight right there is where we got one of the map fragments earlier into the walkthrough for Liernia. if we come right over here we can activate a um, summoning pool or fug whatever you want to call it hop back on torrent and we want to angle ourselves just this way. There's some crafting items just over here. We can pick up. And then if we hit that. It dispels the illusory wall so that we can come down here. Now this enemy right here is super weak to heal. This is why I put heal on. So I can show everybody how easy this mini boss can be. And you know what? We won't even summon in Oleg. We'll just uh, use heal on him. So cast heal. And then cast heal. Oh, oh, wow. Still hit him. Boom. Two heals. He's dead. Easy peasy lemon squeezy probably one of the only bosses that is going to be that easy in the game you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to if you're not statted for heal you can go ahead and put the electrify armament on use your um, seal to uh, cast electrify armament and then summon in oleg and put in some work on him Right here, we get the Frozen Needle. This is a pretty cool um, sword. It's essentially a rapier with frost on it. And it will cause um, frostbite buildup for enemies. So if you're a caster, it can be a pretty useful weapon. Or even dex builds. Dex builds can uh, use that as well. Right here is an illusory wall. We're going to hit it. 
to dispel it. And then we're going to light this grace and sit at the grace to reset all the enemies. Over here is EG. We're going to go talk to him for a bit. Well, look at you. We don't receive many visitors. I presume you are uh, tarnished. What brings you here? Oh, pardon me. It's hardly my place to ask, is it? I am E.G. A blacksmith who once served the Karian royals. An old codger who refuses to retire his rusty hammer. So here I am, still quietly plying my trade on this spot. Perhaps you'd like a display? These bones are old, but still able. Oh, watch out there. When I'm absorbed in my smithing, I lose sight of all else. If you come too close, I'm apt to cause you harm. I am, after all, terribly large compared to you, Tarnished. You don't know how hard it is not to break anything while I work. Brave Tarnished, a word of warning, if you please. This territory once belonged to the Karian royal family. Their manor lies not far beyond this point. When the Rhea Lucaria Academy turned on the Karians, the Knights of the Cuckoo descended on this tract. After leveling it, they carried on to the manor. The Karians were taken off guard. But their strength had not waned, and they repelled the knight's onslaught by conjuring an enchanted snare that remains potent to this day. That is why I say, Tarnished, don't go near the manor unless you wish to lie with the corpses of the heedless knights of the Cuckoo. Blythe actually did that, did he? Quite a rare occurrence for such a guarded soul as he. Perhaps he sensed something unusual about you. At any rate, if you're friendly with Blythe, I've something else that might suit you. I've explained the peril of the enchanted snare that remains at the Royal Carrion Manor. Whatever you do, Brave Tarnished, stay away from that death trap. All right, now that we have EG's dialogue all done, he can sell us some really cool items. Number one, he will sell us an unlimited amount of sombering um, ones and twos. And he will also sell us three sombering threes and fours. More importantly, he will sell us the talisman, the Carrion Filigreed Crest. This is a cool talisman, but very niche. Like, it, I don't know. I never use it, even though, like, it can be useful in some situations. All it really does is lowers your FP consumed by any skill. And it can come in handy, like, with our Bloodhound Step. You know, we won't use as much FP to use that skill. I just, I don't ever really use it. But if you think that you can use it, feel free. I'm not going to buy this now. I will be buying this off screen. I will be buying all of these three items off screen. So if you have the runes to buy them now, go ahead and buy them now. I will be buying them later. He also is a blacksmith, so he can upgrade your weapons. We're going to upgrade our Bloodhound's Fang to plus four. And then we will let Bl not Blythe, this isn't Blythe, we'll let EG do what EG does best, and that is Reed. He was talking about the Carrion Castle, which is just up the way. This is not a very big area, but there's a lot 
to it. And we're not going to be worrying about any of this stuff over here until after we go through um, the Kalid Wilds. After we beat Kalid, we'll come back here and we will finish all that stuff up because that's going to start Ronnie's quest line. Let's go ahead and put some markers down. We want to put our first marker down right over here. Our second marker is going to be about right there. Our third marker right here. Our fourth marker down over here. And then lastly, our fifth marker over here. So let's start making our way to the markers that are all bunched up on the compass. So I wouldn't go by your compass there. Just as you see them in the distance is what I usually rely on. going to have some Rhea Lucaria soldiers off to the right there. We're also going to have a Cuckoo Knight on a horse just over there. I'm not going to bother fighting them. You're more than welcome to fight them if you want. You can farm up their gear. Oh my goodness. It's not a hard jump. I'm just trashed here at the moment. All right. Well, we'll go up this way then. Right here, be really careful. As soon as you get close to that item over there, you're going to have some enemies spawn behind you. And they're going to be the enemies that ring their bell and send those little ghost, golden ghost things at you. So just be aware of that. We're going to scoop this up real quick. It's just a somber smithing stone three. And then we're going to go over here to the carriage. That is on the move. Hit one of the giants so that the carriage stops. And then we're going to jump off Torrent. Open up this chest. Try to be as quick as you can. We get the Carrion Knight's sword. And then just kind of run off to the side. Things should stop chasing you. But if they don't, you can run a little bit further. Up there is a enemy shooting stuff at us. I'm going to take everything out down here first. Also, you can summon in this area. So if you want to summon in Oleg or whoever you have, go ahead and do that. It'll help with taking care of some of these guys and keeping them distracted while you... Um, can take out that annoying fool up top there. There we go. Get the Rhea Lucarian Greaves. Pick ourselves up a rune arc. We'll go ahead and we'll put on a flask here so that we can get passive healing and have a bubble tier around us. Right up here we have the pumpkin head. He's got a spear that he wants to throw at us. It's all good. He's really not that hard. Dropped us a Sanctuary Stone. Over here we have quite a few enemies. Just be careful. There is one hiding in the bushes over there. So he's going to run up behind us. 
job, Oleg. And then we have a Cuckoo Knight that's going to start running towards us. Ouch. Nice work, Oleg. Nice work. And he should disappear. Because there's no more enemies. So in this chest we get some Albanoric Blood Clots. Six of them. And then we're going to pick up some smithing stone fours. Let's hop back on Torrent. We're about to get the jellyfish shield. Pretty cool shield. If you are any kind of melee fighter, whether it's quality, dex, or strength, the jellyfish shield is quite a good shield for you. I'll be showcasing that um, in the next video. We'll be using that shield and I'll probably use its buff too and explain that a little more um, in the next video. We also picked up some blood grease. Right here we have a um, grace. We're not going to rest at that one. Doesn't matter. We're about to get another grace up top here at the four belfries. Which is where we are heading now. Just be very careful. There are a, are a bunch of trolls patrolling this area. Headless trolls. You can fight them if you want. Um, I don't think they give you very many runes for killing them, but I could be mistaken. Just keep running. Don't don't stop. They will chase you for good ways. Just keep following the path up top here. Until you get to the grace. Once you get to the grace, go ahead and light it. And sit at it. So that you can reset all the enemies. So our next stop is going to be the Chapel of Anticipation. Right here we get an Imbued Sword Key. We're going to be using that in just a second here. Just got to run down here first. And this first... Belfry over here is going to take us to the Chapel of Anticipation and how you're going to know is by this message right here. So all of these Belfries each have a message next to them and if the message right here says whatever the first word is, I can't pronounce it, I apologize. Uh, but whatever that is of anticipation, you know you're in the right spot. So we're going to use our imbued sword key. And then we're going to go through the portal. I'll see everybody on the other side. Grab some butterflies. And then we're about to fight the grafted scion. Go ahead and buff our weapon. Not that we really need to. This boss fight should be extremely easy for everybody. It is not a hard one at all. I feel like the grafted scion right here is way easier than the ones in the open world. Then boom, he's dead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So 
the grafted scions going to drop us the ornamental straight sword for all of you faith builds this right here will be most likely your main weapon such a good faith weapon um, you can two hand it and it will turn into two swords instead of just one you can hit l2 on the playstation at least uh, and it will cast a faith spell to imbue your weapons with faith. And you'll do even more damage with that. Uh, so good good straight sword for all you faith builds. And then right here is the golden beast crest shield. It's alright. Nothing special about it. It's just a great shield. So and what I mean like great shield, like a bigger shield. Uh, so it'll block more damage. I think 100% of damage it'll block. So it, it could be a really good faith setup there. Right here are the doors that we opened up when we first started the game. And we looked out and we we're like, oh, what kind of castle is that? What castle is that? Uh, that is um, Stormvale Castle. Stormvale Castle over there. Which you can see a lot better now. Instead of it being all obscured and everything. We're going to go through the door over here. Pick up the Stormhawk King Ashes. That's going to be for Nefeli Lu. That's going to continue her quest line, which we'll get into a little more later into the game. Let's go ahead and open up this chest. We get Stormhawk Denna. Or Din? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I think it's Din. That's for us. We'll be able to use that. Sorry, I wanted to go to uh, my map, not the um, equipment and stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and put down some markers. We're going to put a marker here. We're going to put a marker here. And we're going to put a marker down right here. And now let's fast travel to the foot of the four belfries. See everybody over there. Go ahead and put my lantern on real fast. So this first marker is going to be where one of the singing bat ladies are. If you don't care about it, just pass this uh, up. I wouldn't bother if you don't care about killing her, but I like my runes. I'm sure everybody else does too. And she drops a rune six. Just be careful for the bats. They are jerks. Hop on Torn as best as you can and just run away. Over here at the second marker is going to be an ever jail. Try to hop in as fast as you can to get rid of the bats. All right, let's heal and then, um, sure. Why not, uh, imbue our weapon with lightning? It doesn't hurt. Just gives some extra damage. This is going to be a troll. Pretty easy fight. Not hard. Not hard at all. Run to the front of him. I'm not going to bother getting a critical on him. Just because he is so easy. Boom. Dead. Super easy. We get the Great Blade Phalanx for killing him. The Great Blade Phalanx is a really cool spell for all you casters out there. If you cast that, it will put three big great blades above your head so whenever you're fighting a boss or a tough enemy those blades will all shoot out towards that boss and hit them all at hit the boss all at once or the enemy all at once and do a ton of damage it's kind of a uh, defensive slash offensive spell 
right here we're going to be invaded by Edgar. That's Arena's dad. We fought him, or we didn't fight him. We helped him over by Castle Morn. He is not a hard fight at all. Super easy. He's a pushover. He is nothing compared to Vike. Vike was much harder compared to Edgar. So for killing Edgar, we get a Shabriri Grape, which we can use to give to Hyetta uh, to continue her quest line. He'll also drop us the Banished Knight Halbred plus eight. Uh, it, it's a decent weapon if you want to use a Halbred. This isn't a bad um, weapon to use. He'll also drop us two raw meat dumplings. So if you killed Edgar before um, here, like over where Irina was, all these um, raw meat dumplings will not be here. Uh, the bodies won't even be here. So keep that in mind. If you killed him over by Castle Morn in the Weeping Peninsula, all this stuff won't be here. He won't invade you here. He'll already be dead. Let's go ahead and light this grace. We're going to sit at it just for funsies. And then I think right here, we're going to end the video. So I want to start by telling everybody, thank you so very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.